Hi, NPI brought to you by DigiKey Native Fruit. This is new product introduction. This week it is from Analog Devices Lidata. What is the NPI new product introduction of a week? This week. Okay, this week, um, DigiKey sent us a link to this, and even though they didn't feature it, I don't think the AV8460 is a pretty sweet ass chip. So let's show this off. Um, from analog devices. Uh, I will say that actually this is not what the chip looks like. It's just a representation of it because actually the uh -huh. thermal pad is on top and um, we'll talk okay. about it in a moment. So the AD8460, this is, I mean, the the short description at the top is, is pretty self-explanatory. It's 110 volt high voltage, plus or minus 55 volt, one amp high current output, arbitrary waveform generator with integrated 14-bit high-speed DAC um, with SPI or parallel control. So this is a chip that can create arbitrary analog voltage outputs and waveform with those analog outputs from plus minus 12 volts up to plus minus 55 volts output and sync or source up to one amp continuous, which is kind of like the big deal because it's like, you can get things that can drive up to an amp, but usually they can't do like positive and negative voltages. You can do, um, arbitrary waveform generators, but they usually don't have this high voltage or high current. Um, one megahertz signal bandwidth, uh, kind of cool chip. If you, it's definitely filling a need if you're like, I need to create, um, you know, they say test equipment or um, piezo drivers, but if you're ever dealing with like weird analog devices that you're testing or calibrating or specifying, um, especially if you want to do that on the road. Because normally what you would use is a function generator um, you know, we had these in school. I don't own one anymore, but um, these are devices that will create, you know, arbitrary waveforms. You're like, oh man, I need a 10 megahertz square wave or a 400 kilohertz sine wave into 50 ohm load. Um, you get one of these. And, you know, these are, are great little devices. They sit on your desk. They're not even that expensive. Uh, this is the one from LaCroix even is like a thousand bucks, which is a great deal. Maybe I'll pick one up. Um, it looks really nice. It has a nice big TFT screen on it. But um, the problem is that these are really big and heavy and usually really loud. And if you want to integrate this into uh, field management, like, you know, you're sending people to calibrate equipment and they have to be able to generate these voltages to do, um, you know, on the fly testing of devices or motors or robotics or sensors, um, or you want it to be built into the device, so you can use soft calibration. Uh, you're not going to put this like 40 pound beast in there. Um, so basically it's like a DAC, it's like your everyday 14 bit DAC. It's just like, it's just really beefy. Um, it's like really beefy. Like, like there's every week we try to do something where we could put a picture of a hamburger in. I know. Well, this time, this is this a week we Tavern. Thanks. Thanks Susan for the Flickr image. Um, you get, you're getting attribution. With Jake. This is like the tastiest looking hamburger yeah. image of Flickr. Um, so. Yeah, I mean, it's basically kind of like test equipment, but the other thing I can see is like, you know, we make test jigs for hardware and like, we've never had to use plus or minus 50 volts, but if we did, it's like, you don't want to simply give every test bench one of those gigantic, you know, like I said, 40 pound function generators. Um, so if you can have this automatically built and, and controlled by the test equipment, um, it's easier to, to move around, less likely to break. Um, so you said bottom left, there's the SPI interface. You can use that for sending commands, reading registers. There's also a parallel DB0 to DB13, kind of in the middle left. That's the parallel input for the arbitrary waveform generation. We'll chat about that. Um, other than that, not a lot of components required. Like this isn't simplified. It really is like a couple passives. You do have to give it the external plus or minus 50 volts, plus or minus 12 volts. Um, and then you have the output. There's this little compensation circuitry. Uh, it'll shut down the circuitry, um, you know, and there's a, an alert. That you can set up because you know as you expect plus or minus 50 volts one amp it can get pretty hot so you have to do some uh thermal verification to make sure you don't uh overheat the device there's two basic modes um if you if you just need to do little square waves or like a pulse or just different uh, arbitrary voltages you can use the apg format um and that is um you only get 16 levels but you basically pre-program it over SPI and it kind of self runs um, on its own. So you can see here, you can have, um, you set it up and it kind of goes, you can tell it like, okay, I want you to go 20, 
then back down to zero, then maybe negative 10, and then back up to zero. So you can do up to 16 levels. Um, but if you want to like do a sine wave or a triangle wave or square, you know, more complicated pulses, well, very, like very thin pulses, for example, because you want like an impulse um, into a circuit, for that, um, you would need to use um, the parallel interface. Actually, can you go back to here? Because I didn't have a graphic um, on the left-hand side, that DB0 to DB13. Um, so the SPI transfer, you would use that. Uh, it's a standard four-pin serial transfer. There's a bunch of registers. You read write registers, kind of like you expect. Um, nothing too unusual there. And you can do things like set the thermal limits and alerts and... Um, you know, what kind of like gain you want and what the external voltage references are, et cetera. If you're doing the parallel mode, um, the other thing is you need to drive it with something really fast because it doesn't have internal RAM. Um, so like if you want to do a sine wave, you know, you want to maybe generate like, a, you know, a couple hundred point sine wave, 14 bit um, DAC signal, and you have to like continuously pulse it. So you need to use something like, like an RP2040 um, RP2350, or you could maybe use some external SRAM that's parallel, load it up with all the data, and then you could just use like a binary counter, a simple output that just clocks through the data to, to pulse it out into this driver. I think on the eval board, they use an FPGA or something, um, which is fine too. But you definitely think about it. Like if you want to connect this chip to a, a Raspberry Pi, just be aware that if you want to use the truly arbitrary waveform generator, you'll need something that can generate that waveform in binary signal very, very quickly. Nothing to watch for is, of course, like I said, one amp, you know, plus minus 50 volts a piece, um, even, you know, half an amp at plus minus 20, that's that's a lot of amps. Um, it's a lot of watts. And so you're going to need to heat sink it. And so there's a thermal pad on the top, not on the bottom. Um, so you can apply a, uh, a heat sink and a fan. I think the eval board even tells you like how to get, or maybe even comes with one, a heat sink and a fan. Um, you know, you can, you can drive that current, but you do need to dissipate the power off. It's not switching. It's linear. So if you're, um, you know, if you're, if you're sourcing, sorry, if you, if your power supply is plus minus 50, but then you're driving 12 volt, you have to dissipate that 50 minus 12 volts somewhere. Um, package is a TQFP. Other than that's pretty standard. I think it's, you know, 0.5 millimeter spacing, easy to use. Most of the pins are ground, or like I said, that 14 pin parallel input. Not a lot going on in there, which is kind of nice. I like, I like the simple design. Here's what it looks like on the eval board. The eval board is in stock at DigiKey as well, and it comes with a driver, um, too, that helps you get started. So this thing that plugs into the side there. Uh, this is like a nice chip, you know, it's like if this, this could really easily solve somebody's problem. Um, I can see somebody being like, uh, you know, I don't want to create the drive circuitry, the amplification and the deck, uh, all three separate things. I want to have it all integrated. Um, this will do the job. Uh, oh, this is the controller board. Like I said, you can use Windows software um, to drive. Like it looks like an FPGA there in the in the middle that actually does the uh, waveform generation. And this chip is in stock it is yeah we're still uh, we're still not used to this idea we'll get over it yeah. eventually like this which is kind of like funky and arcane wasn't there wasn't this meme like depression era folks afterwards they always like saved the cans for everything they yeah. they, they they really made things stretch further I mean, even though decades later there was more surplus you know people price. that are like i'm never throwing away like a quad op amp you know you're like oh who's ever gonna need like a like, ts 924 but then like in the middle of the part charge you're like i'm paying 10 yeah. bucks for a ts 924 so, this sucks did you want to pay play this video it's a little longer than our usual ones but do you want to play it Time, yeah, let's, play it. let's play it let's play it okay so we're okay. gonna do this video and then um we'll do new products out on the other side enjoy a video from analog like this as the automated test equipment market evolves so too has the demand for solutions to test devices at higher voltage many emerging technologies benefit from high voltage promoting higher efficiency power delivery Driving higher voltage enables power delivery at lower current, which condenses the form factor and improves the power efficiency and affordability of systems. Typical discrete solutions suffer from size, speed, availability, and reliability limitations. Integrating high voltage solutions into a single chip unlocks new potential for the next generation of automated test equipment. Introducing the AD8460, an analog device's industry-first high-voltage, high-current, arbitrary waveform generator with an integrated 14-bit high-speed DAC. 
The 808460 combines efficiency and reliability into a power-dense package, offering superior design in ease, configurability, and safety. The product is optimized for high power dissipation in a thermally efficient 12 by 12 millimeter TQFP package with top side exposed pad, allowing for mounting of a heat sink and thermal management. The AD8460 integrates a full signal chain for high voltage test, a 14 bit high speed DAC converting digital input, a novel high voltage amplifier enabling precision and high speed analog performance an integrated high power output stage delivering high current output, a digital engine enabling programmability for the chip, and analog protection features. Each of these blocks result in an impressive single chip solution, solving a variety of customer challenges in the high voltage space. Optimized for capacitive load drive at high voltage, the amplifier features slew boosting up to 1800 volts per microsecond. Output slew rate can be controlled either digitally through edge speed control or with external compensation to enable stable load drive within the 1 amp current drive capability. With these controls, the AD8460 features unlimited capacitive load drive. Input to the AD8460 can be programmed between analog pattern generation and arbitrary waveform generation. For simplified pattern generation, APG mode offers up to 16 selectable voltage levels. In AWG mode, 14-bit digital data is streamed to the input and clocking of the part translates the current digital code to voltage at the output, enabling the creation of unlimited complex high voltage waveforms. Monitoring and shutdown of devices under programmable conditions keep operation within the safe operating area with adequate response to system faults and maximizing testing uptime. With the AD8460's compact bits-in power out. Hi, I'm MPR.